This One Degree Outside video is sponsored by the Topsfield Fair, America's oldest fair. You can pre-order your admission, meal, and ride tickets today at topsfieldfair.org and join the fun October 4th through 14th, conveniently located on Route 1, just off of Interstate 95. Hi, Matt Noyce, One Degree Outside Weather Network, your monthly forecast for the month of October. It is the first weekday of the month. Danielle and I love to give you a look at the new month on every first weekday. So, first thing we think about is snow. Is it going to snow in October? Well, it could for just about any of us. Nature has proven that in New England time and again. However, average first snow of a tenth of an inch or greater is in the month of October for the high terrain of the northern Green Mountains, for some of the higher terrain in northern New York State, the great north woods of New Hampshire and bleeding just across the line to the far northeast kingdom of Vermont and in northwestern Maine as well. For a lot of the rest of us in northern New England, it's generally in November you'd find your first tenth of an inch or more of snow, and the dates are later the farther south you come. In fact, onto the Cape, on average for that first date, it's not until we get to the second half of December. The other thing is frost. Uh, we do become more vulnerable to frost. In fact, we're on borrowed time. The average first frost date in Concord, New Hampshire has already happened. It hasn't happened yet. We haven't had frost as of this recording on October 1st, but North Adams, same deal. We are now past due for the first frost. So you want to stay tuned to the forecast all the way through. Notice the farther south you go, the later it becomes, particularly in some place like the metro center of Boston, where you don't find your average first frost until the beginning of November. Now, what about the weather pattern that's coming up? Look, the defining pattern in the jet stream, at least through the first half of October, is what we call a split flow. What that means is you've got a northern feed of disturbances that tend to be more moisture starved, and your subtropical jet stream that carries the moisture, and that shows up with some of the coloring that you see down across the southern United States and the Gulf, that stays separate. Now, when the two phase and come together, you can get a big storm. But it looks like for at least the first half of the month, mostly that happens out over the ocean. That doesn't happen when you get close to home or even across a lot of the country. Now, that doesn't stop strong northern stream disturbances from carving out what we call a trough. And that does bring cooler air. So I can't rule out not only that you would find the scattered showers uh, coming through and quick moving disturbances, but also some shots of colder air. That certainly is a possibility. And frankly, it raises the likelihood of getting the first frost here as we head into the next couple of weeks and we get these kind of recurring bursts of cold coming out of Canada. Overall, though, we do think a lot of the country is warmer than normal. Perhaps you're going to be close to normal when you get across the mid-Atlantic and the southeastern United States with some of those incursions of cool air. But we probably are close to or just above normal in the northeast and New England as well. Normal high for Boston would be about 62. Normal low is about 47, 48 degrees. We look at the month that was, and we ended up with over 300% of our normal rain because of Helene in some of the southeast. In fact, we had a 500,000-year flood that was happening in spots. Generally, if you compared this to our forecast uh, at the beginning of September, this is pretty close. And the reason I say that is because I think as we head into October, it is a very different pattern. I think if you maintain that split flow in the jet stream and you just can't tap the moisture, you get this big, broad area of drier than normal conditions. Maybe the exception will be west of the Cascades and the Pacific Northwest as you carry in Pacific moisture. And the other exception would be across the far southeast, the Gulf Coast down to Florida, where the subtropical jet would provide some recurring showers and thunderstorms for perhaps tipping the scale to above normal precipitation, but unlikely to be the case here at home. By the way, how do we get 0.2 inches of snow on average in Boston if we're talking about a first snowfall date of a tenth of an inch? doesn't happen until the end of November. Well, you've had some outliers, right? We've had some October snows that have been heavier, so it may throw off your average on amounts while it doesn't necessarily change the average first date, if that makes sense. All right, meanwhile, you can go to the App Store or Google Play and stay posted all month long. Get the 14-day forecast, the hourly forecast, or the radar when there's rain or snow. That's ongoing. Just search noises, one degree outside weather. That's the way things look for now. Thanks for checking in. Look forward to seeing you with more of our videos throughout the month at onedegreeoutside.com.